Beth Rigby of Sky News. Thank you, Prime Minister. Finally, after a very long and hard year, the end is now in sight. But no one can doubt the huge scar COVID is going to leave on our economy, on public health and on the lives of all our children. And to each of you, what do you think the main social, health and economic challenges will be? And will we be grappling with the legacy of COVID in the past year for the rest of our lives? Thank you. Beth, I certainly think that this is something that we will all remember and be dealing with in different ways for probably, for certainly in my case, for as long as, uh, as I live. It's been an extraordinary uh, moment in our in our in our history and a, a deeply difficult and, and distressing period. Uh, if I look at the uh, the problems that uh, we face at the moment, in addition to the the the, the continuing healthcare uh, threat that we face, and we, we you know we must be realistic. There is uh, another wave uh, building in, uh, in, 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 in on the European continent uh, amongst our friends. Uh, we will see it wash onto our shores. I, 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 I have no doubt. The the extent to which it affects us will depend, as, as Chris was saying, on the strength of the fortifications we've now built against it by the, by the vaccine programme. Uh, that's, that's, that's one problem we've still got to deal with. But the, the legacy issue, I think, for me, uh, leaving aside all the, all the other backlogs, is, is, is education. And it's the loss the, of, of learning for so many uh, children and young people that's the thing we've got to focus on now as a, as a society. And, th and that, I think, is uh, an opportunity to make amends, uh, because you know, there's going to be, uh, this year, uh, a group of, of kids going from primary to secondary school. There'll be uh, perhaps 90,000, it's calculated, uh, who will uh, be behind in their basic literacy, uh, unable properly to read or write, 90,000 more uh, as a result of, of COVID. Uh, a huge, you know, between three and five months of education has been lost. Uh, and of course, the, the detriment uh, falls the hardest on the, uh, the kids who have needed attention the most and, and who have uh, been unable to, uh, who haven't been provided properly with uh, the time and the, uh, uh, and the support that they need. So that's why we've been working so hard as a, as a government to make up that gap uh, with everything that we've, uh, we've done uh, through, the, uh, through the holiday support, through uh, investment in, in the catch-up funds, uh, the, the 1.7 billion uh, that we've put in, uh, the, everything we've done to roll out laptops uh, across the, uh, as many kids as, as, as we could. Uh, and that's why, uh, so, uh, in addition to the work that Gavin Williamson is doing, we, we, Sir, Sir Kevin Collins uh, is the uh, Education Recovery uh, Commissioner who is leading that work of recovery. And what Sir Kevin is, and his team are going to be focusing on is not just uh, remediating the damage, repairing uh, the damage, plugging the gaps, uh, but I think there's, an, there's a chance to, to, to learn from the, the pandemic and, the, and, the, and all the ways in which actually some teachers and some schools have done brilliantly at uh, discovering how you can teach uh, through Zoom, uh, discovering ways in which we can actually uh, teach better uh, in some ways through the technology that we've been using, but also uh, maximising our use of, of, of tutoring as well so that uh, kids who have fallen behind and kids with potential get one-to-one -one tutoring uh, where we think that can make a difference. And, you know, I'm not going to pretend that everything is going to work first time. And, you know, we've been through a long period where, we, we, you know, we've got used to things not working uh, first time, but we're going to persevere. And uh, I think that, that we, will, we will start to make a big impact on, on those kids' lives. It's been an absolutely uh, unimaginable year for... Uh, for, for school children, for university students, uh, for everybody in, in education. Uh, they've put up with incredible uh, privations uh, in order to, to help us, the whole country, get through. And our, whole, our future as a country depends on us now repaying that generation, making sure they get the education they need. So that's, uh, that's the, uh, for me, that's the, the biggest priority. I mean, just narrowly on the health side, um, COVID itself, I anticipate being with us for the foreseeable future. We'll have to do it, deal with it in some form or another. Now, science has extraordinarily responded to this. If you think where we were a year ago, vaccines, drugs, diagnostics, and understanding of the virus, we will be able to bring it down to manageable levels, but it's not going away. So we will have COVID for the indefinite future. 
Second thing, uh, which is a health issue from COVID, and we've said this right from the beginning, this is one of the things we were very concerned about right from the beginning, uh, collectively, um, uh, is that the impact on other aspects of the health service will have some delayed effect. There will be people, for example, who probably delayed having screening, and I would really encourage people uh, to take that up for things like cervical cancer, breast cancer, uh, which have the, run the risk uh, of people having a delayed diagnosis. The same will be true for people who've not gone for routine or elective care they normally was. That's a medium-term issue, but potentially could be a significant one if we are not uh, absolutely alive to it. And the third one, which, again, we've recognised fully from the beginning, and one of the things that's made so many of the decisions very difficult, is much of what's happened in lockdown has the risk of making people who are on the borderlines of deprivation uh, in more difficult economic and other circumstances. And we all know that has a massive impact on long-term health Im implications. So that, and that could have really quite a long-term implication, again, if we don't take it seriously. I suppose the final point I'd make is that COVID has shone a light into areas of healthcare. The people who are being affected by COVID now are the same fam families, the same places, the same people who are affected by so many other diseases. And I think we really need to look at this very seriously because these, you know, the, the, the same people will be suffering from the diseases of smoking, of other diseases of deprivation and so on. We've really got, I think, to take this very seriously as a, as a, as a country and as a community. I think, uh, I mean, clearly today is a day to think about all the people who've died this year as a result of this terrible virus, but also the people who've suffered both physical and mental health mm. and all of the consequences that come with that and the societal effects. And um, in September, I asked the British Academy to get their academics together to try and address the question, what might the societal impact, long-term societal impacts of COVID be? And they've got 200 of the brightest and best of, of, of the fellows of the British Academy. And a report was published today trying to give an evidence base for what that might look like. And uh, there are a number of things in there ranging from the topics that have been covered from education to inequality to health that I think are highlighted and have profound implications for how policy might evolve, uh, but what's important is that there's an evidence base now to work on, and that report, I think, will be useful for policymakers going forward. Thank you. Uh, thanks both, and thanks, Beth. Ben Riley-Smith, Telegraph. 